In this tutorial, we're going to be creating a simple isometric environment, like something you would see in the NES game Solstice. We're going to be doing it in about five minutes. To do this, we're going to be using the Isometric 2.5D toolset. I would highly recommend it if you are making an isometric game. It does just about everything for you and makes it very simple. After importing it into your project, the first thing you want to do is click on Edit, Project Settings, and Physics. Then in the top right, change your Y value to 0 and your Z value to negative 9.81. The physics works a little bit differently in an isometric game. Next, click on the main camera and make sure you have the ISO world script added. The information for this set of variables is different depending on the assets you're using. I would suggest opening up the scenes that he provides with the product and this will let you see what changes are needed depending on the assets that you're using. I'm going to be using his uh, test assets here, just simple cubes and uh, floor square sprites, and this is already set up for them. The other thing I already have in this scene is a player object, and this is a prefab. It's already set up, so I have a player that can move around if I give him ground to stand on. So I'm going to drag a floor over, and I'll place it underneath him. And if I hit play, you'll notice he falls right through. This is because there is not a box collider. But we don't use a regular box collider. We're going to use something called the ISO box collider. This comes with his product. Add the script. Now if you hit play, little alien guy stands on it and when he walks off, he falls off. This is perfect and I personally don't like adding a box collider to each individual piece on the ground. I find it easier just to turn off the sprite renderer and down here change the size. So we're making a 3x3 three three room, so I'll make it 3x3. Three three. And now I can drag and drop these floor tiles that do not have a box collider. And this floor here, which I will rename base, has a box collider for all of these uh, sprites. I just find this easier. Uh, in an isometric environment, it can be a little tricky uh, viewing where colliders are. It's not quite as intuitive, at least not to me, as you would see in a 3D environment or a 2D platformer. So I prefer having the box colliders separate when it comes to the base. The next thing is to add walls. So if we add some walls in here, let's create a doorway here. We now have walls, but again, the player can just walk right through them. So for each of these walls, we need to add a box collider. You can see the box collider here, and now our player should be able to walk into them and not fall off. And that works as intended, but you'll notice that he's kind of hidden. And you can even see he disappears a little bit there. The reason for this is that our player, uh, our player sprite is not far enough in the layer. So if we up him to three, he will appear in front. But we don't want him to appear in front. Um, typically, an isometric game would just do something like this. Uh, they would delete these walls. And this is what their isometric environment would look like. Uh, I don't like that very much. Um, if the art style doesn't suit it, uh, this kind of creates an optical illusion. It looks like this is upside down almost. So what we do instead is click on the color and drop down the alpha channel to, say, 155. And now we have walls that function as walls, but you can clearly see that the player is behind them and still visible. Now, you will want to... Uh, alter the order and layer. You can see that the alien head was sticking above this isometric uh, isometric square here. So you want to change the order and the layer for the player to where he'll appear in front of those walls and change the other walls to be in front of him. So now our player is behind these walls and in front of these walls. And that's it. We now have a working room.